waiting for the hippie oh. chicks to make a come. I mean, the Dixie chicks to make a comeback. <laughs> I think America's forgot about what they said. Yeah, I'm just glad I'm. I'm not a cowboy. Corey playing cowboy, take me away. That was awkward. It is. <laughs> Morning is awkward. All right, we are day three. We have yet to call in an elk. For those who are following along on Destination Elk, hang with us, it's gonna happen. We are hunting new country for Roosevelt's and uh, it rained pretty much all day yesterday, all night last night, everything is soaking wet. John had to completely change camo patterns because the pattern on his gear from yesterday washed off the gear <laughs> we're gonna go and beat some brush see if we can find an elk heat up our wet boots maybe they'll dry out from the uh, heat that we're putting off anything more you want us to say yeah <laughs> So we're going to plan B this morning and uh, got a spot that's a big canyon. We drop down in it and just make a full day hunt. We just got to find some sign. Once we find the elk, hopefully we can get him to talk. But... Since we clearly aren't going to be eating elk steak today, I figure we might as well get some food. It's amazing. I mean, there are blackberries up there 12 feet in the air. And we have to walk through this stuff. Everything here has either thorns or gallons of water attached to it. It's not an elk steak, but it'll do for now. It's one of the differences between how we're used to hunting and this hunt so far is we've been doing quite a bit of driving and we'll get out and hike for an hour or two and the benefit of that is we're able to see a lot of varied terrain uh, just different habitat and able to see where the sign is and I think uh, this is day three and we're starting to get a, a bit of an idea for where the elk really are hanging out and really the sign we've seen has been the old growth open stuff uh, right on the edge of really brushy deep canyons and on the edge of some clear-cut logging so we've got one more hike we're going to do today it's going to be pretty much a, an all-day hike the rest of the day down through a lot of just different terrain and out a really long ridge through a canyon up the other side so probably going to beat a lot of brush uh, hopefully getting some old growth ridges and really see if there's any sign any elk in there 
but with only four days left to hunt, I think by tomorrow we've got to kind of finalize and formulate a plan that takes us into where we're seeing elk. And so far, there's only two areas. I know as, as the season goes on, the elk are going to change and they're going to move. They're going to start rutting. They're going to probably go to some of the more uh, open places like where we were this morning. But right now, this early season, we've got to just find where they're at, the pockets they're in, and focus on that and try to capitalize on a couple opportunities. and you can cover miles on that ridge in here. If you hike seven miles, you've, you've covered some country, so that's the plan. Find elk. Hmm? That's the plan. Find elk. Findelk.com. <laughs> 158 feet to the road. Not the first time we've heard that one. See, Brinker gives statistical distances, I always say, just over the next ridge. It's a little bit ambiguous. Those weren't too old to track. There's elk in here somewhere. I mean... There's not very many places for him to hide. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Though is where you got into a bunch of sign on those side draws, right? Up ahead, and those, those three bowl things were right back up in there on that hill, and it all just swoops down into here. Let me guess, just another 150 yards oh, or so. 148 feet that way. <laughs> it's a little further than that. <laughs> you had times everything by five. See, I, I leave everything kind of ambiguous, so I say over the next ridge. That way it's like, well, we aren't to the ridge yet. You guys are given specific distances, and that's... It's the only way you can make it through here. That's what I did. 100 it's feet is a great way of encouraging people not to get it. It's only 150 yards, bro. That means 300. <laughs> well, aren't turn we know we'll hit the ocean before we have to turn <laughs> around. Or the surf, we have to turn yeah. around. Yeah. It's only 60 yards through this thicket. <laughs> Back at camp, we made a loop down through the canyon below camp here. Trucks are parked down the road, probably two and a half miles. So we're gonna jump in a truck here and go back down and get them. No sign. We saw one track in that whole loop and it's beautiful country. No reason it wouldn't hold elk, but that's elk hunting. I don't question why just realize there's no elk here and move on. So I think uh, the plan today is to go back over where we've gotten into elk for the evening hunt. And you know, we're day three, finishing out day three here. 
and we've got four days of hunting left so we need to we need to shift from looking for elk and looking for elk areas to hunting elk and uh, I think that's the the focus from here on out so it's a beautiful country but it is discouraging to go and, and hike into beautiful country and not see any elk signs so we're gonna go it's a long drive um, but we're gonna go back over on the other side and do some hunting there probably spend the majority of the rest of our time where we know they're elk and try to get some encounters so stay tuned for tonight it's it's gonna get good camp appears to be a little soaked we've got a straight pole here that isn't quite so straight anymore. It's a metal pole. Don't you go stand right there. Uh -huh. I wish to know the awning's waterproof. That was straight. Perfectly bent. Just need to get it on there the other way this time. Man, that one inch solid steel tube is a lot stiffer than I thought it would be. Usually I can bend them really easily. Well, evening of day three, and it's been a very unproductive morning in terms of elk bugling, but we did check off a lot of areas from the list we to checked off not go area. back to. Uh, uh, the elk availability area has shrunk and shrunk and shrunk, so. Which is actually the topic for today's strategy for success I was gonna talk about, so. Uh, Checking areas off? In a, Roundabout sort of way, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I actually plagiarized from Randy Newberg, but one of the things he talks about is basically using the first couple of days of the hunt to just learn the area as much as possible. So we'll use that for today's strategy for success that's sponsored by the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. So the last three days, we've hit several different areas. The first day, we actually came in here and uh, in the morning, and then we drove 35 miles, 35 miles of road here in the unit just to look over some area and say, okay, that has potential. It looks decent. There's a lot of people here. Uh, yesterday, we went to a new area last night, checked out some new areas this morning, went to two new areas. And in those, what's that, five hunts, we've uh, kind of narrowed down where the elk are in a general sense anyway. So that back in here where we're going tonight, we've got into elk. It's old growth timber but it's open old growth timber. So there's vegetation in there. There's a bunch of brush right next to it. Big, heavily used game trails. The area we got into last night where there was sign was on the edge of a clear cut where there was logging. And I read, you know, preparing for this hunt just as much as I could about Roosevelt elk. And one of the things that, that really threatens Roosevelt elk is habitat loss. And the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation has been very active in partnering with timber companies with other agencies to go in and log areas to thin those areas out because we got in a canopy last night and it was the most beautiful epic coastal rainforest and there was no sunlight coming through it was completely sterile mm -hmm. in there and so areas like that are beautiful and you'd think man it's great habitat mm -hmm. it's cool it's a sanctuary mm -hmm. but there's no feed there and the elk just don't go in there so in what we've found out in the last two and a half days in this particular area, we've kind of narrowed down to two areas to focus on for the rest of the hunt. Uh, one being that old growth that's still open. So big timber, lots of vegetation with good brush on the thick, or on the edge of it where it's thick where they can bed. And then logging areas, you know, yeah. cuts and things like that where they've got that transition into some old growth for bedding, but they can go out and feed in those cuts. And so that's, that's our strategy for success. And again, I'm sitting here a complete novice sharing strategies for success on Roosevelt elk hunting. Um, but there's still elk. They're elk. We're going to employ tracks. what we've learned and 
go and see if it works. So judge us, I guess, in a few more days. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah, judge we've, us. Yeah, we've only heard a dozen bugles. Oh, I don't think we've heard I a dozen. I don't think it's been that many, and yeah. we've seen four elk, and very briefly. Yeah. yeah. So now it's time to put all the intel to work, and fortunately we've got a huge jump start in that David's been here and knows the area a little bit and is kind of helping us with some areas to check out. Mm -hmm. Got to keep checking them off. Yep. Yeah, like Babe Ruth always said, every single strike that goes past him is odds go up of him hitting a home run the next time. So. I've noticed, not just here, but also in the Rocky Mountain elk country that I hunt, is every year it changes, but there seems to always be like about 10% of your spot repertoire yeah. or th that are always good. To count on it. And this particular spot's always been good. Yep. The spot we're going tomorrow evening always is good. And then these other spots we're hitting, they're kind of ancillary, like it may be good or it may be not. It's kind of black or white. And so you're using us to do your scouting to find new areas that might be good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, you're supposed <laughs> to be able to call them in even when they're not there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I, I heard he was like Michael Jordan of calling. All right, so. this interview is <laughs> Let's go kill an elk. We were in here three mornings ago. This wasn't here. Very fresh.
right up here. You may be in range. Just let me get up there. That's good. Roosevelt's so get fired up early season. <laughs> Big old dark massive antler. Shoot, I was being this so good. Hey, this yeah. isn't the NBA finals. This is like <sighs> preseason. I know you're all like, you know, 40 points a game and all that. I don't play in exhibition games. Too much of a chance of getting injured. <laughs>
Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, lost an arrow. Don't want head lamp. Yeah, look at that. What is it? Oh, oh my gosh, dude. Right in my femoral artery. Yeah. That's true. Ah. Well, we're back to the truck. It was uh, eventful anyway. Yeah, we saw some bulls. Saw elk, heard bugles. Again, so we've actually heard bugles every day. And uh, unfortunately, didn't go our way tonight. Had them coming by us. Yeah, we had one uh, in the trail on the way in that we messed around with a bit and it went up the hill and then we went around the corner and there was another one fed across and another 15 yards I'd have been within shooting range, but it's too thick and steep and brushy there. So we headed up the ridge and just getting ready to turn around and heard an elk bugle. So we went around the corner, cow called and it bugled again, we bugled and we thought we needed to hoof it up the hill. So we hoofed it up the hill and got up there and cow called and we could hear branches breaking below us and two bulls. 30 yards and they turned camp the hill at about 20 and quartered away but I was looking for them to the right and they went left and the whole time we're sitting there hearing voices, girl voices, a girl talking and uh, come to find out the bull that we were bugling to and as it was coming down the ridge somebody else was there and they shot it and it was laying dead 80 yards below us where we almost got a shot at the other two so we were close. So close, so close. <laughs> But not close enough. It's a fun night, though. It was. We exciting. really didn't go that far, and we were in elk. Yeah, we two most of the evening. Two and a half mile hike. So. Yeah. That's good. Back to the same area, similar area tomorrow, maybe. Yeah, probably. Seem to be in that habitat, right? I was gonna now. say top into that canyon, maybe, but that I don't even know what direction that is. But the the hillside that faces that way <laughs> had good habitat. Yeah, for some reason. It's not, I, I do kind of miss those wet salmon berries though. <laughs> We're dry tonight. I was going to say. <laughs> I actually feel dry and I don't have hypothermia. It's really nice. Other than that. Yeah, but we're all scratched. I was going to say my face got ripped up coming through the yeah. dead stuff. But dead trees. Back at it tomorrow. Dinner? Yeah. Time for dinner. Dinner time. <laughs> well, day three's in the books. Yes, it is. And we're uh, starting to understand a little bit more about hunting Roosevelt elk early. What did you think of that episode? Me? No. <laughs> Them. Them. <laughs> uh, I, you know, overall, I think we're starting to recognize Roosevelt elk early is going to be tough. We're just, the elk are just, they're not dense. I mean, there's one elk here and you hike long ways and there's one elk there, so... Kind of those encounters we're used to and we're hoping for are going to be fewer and farther between. But the good news was tonight was the most excitement we've had. And he didn't lie when he said somebody was going to fill their egg tag. <laughs> <laughs> just he wasn't just, any of us. It wasn't anybody in our group, as you saw. So, yeah. so fr I mean, we just, he goes those long stretches without any action and then you get into it and, and it's there close. and there's that pocket it's like a bee's well bee's nest is a bad analogy for Oregon because it yeah. was nothing like a bee's nest <laughs> yeah nobody got stung but uh you get in those pockets and there's just all of a sudden all the elk are right there and that's what happened tonight was those elk were there and you know we got into the younger bulls down low and almost had an opportunity there just to intercept them as they fed across they weren't interested at all in the calls Yep. And Donnie's a good caller. It wasn't his calling that... I wasn't telling him to go away. No, yeah, they just weren't <laughs> coming in. So we, we got there and then as we moved up the hill, got that bull bugling and I'll be darned if he wasn't coming in on a string. Yeah. Just, it was, I mean, I was, I was up there. It was like, okay, hey, this is happening. The bull's screaming down there. He's working down the draw and all of a sudden we hear brush breaking 20 yards below me. So I'm locked in looking down the hill and all of a sudden John with the cameras right above me is like to the left, to the left and I swing to the left and there's two five points just side by side 
25 yards from us coming up there. And I just, I didn't, couldn't draw back fast enough. They went through the opening and I kind of ran up the hill hoping to intercept them, not realizing still there was a third bull that the one that had been bugling, <laughs> yeah. had been bugling past tense. Yeah. As we get up, the, even before that, as I can hear the bulls walking below us there in the brush, I th I'm thinking, I'm hearing voices. And I even mentioned to John, I said, I hear human voices. He's like, no, no, it's the elk. It's the elk, you know, the elk are making these weird noises. I'm like, no, it sounds like a, a girl talking. It sounds like a human voice. <laughs> so as I go running up there to intercept these two bulls that had walked by us, it's loud and clear. It's human voices. Yeah. And uh, we look down the hill 80 yards from where we're set up. And there's a mature bull elk laying there dead with two people standing there celebrating over it. So yeah. that happens. We got so close. It was it was on a string coming to us. They just happened to be right there. And that's the, the beauty of public land is anybody can be there. And they were there. We're, we're excited for them now. But that night or tonight, we weren't very excited <laughs> for them. <laughs> it was a long walk out of there. Uh, in the dark, in thick, that brush. That was the night. That was the, yeah. yeah. Walking down through the brush, we're going down this steep, brushy hill in the dark, and all of a sudden Brinker says, hey, hold on, stop, stop. And I'm glad we stopped, because yes. he pulls out his, his cell phone light, and he's kind of shining it, and John's running the camera, puts on his headlamp, and turns it on, and right in front of John, like right there at gut level, broadhead sticking straight up through the brush and yeah. walking down the hill and Brinker had a, a mechanical malfunction and one of his arrows came out of his quiver and his land they're pointing right up going down a steep hill John would have stepped right into it yeah so averted a, a near disaster with the broadhead yes but not have been good <laughs> no so Thanks for joining us. Day three, there was action. We're excited for tomorrow because we found out what action is like in Roosevelt country, and it happens, and it can happen early. It's, what, August 27th today when we're hunting, mm -hmm. and uh, bulls are bugling, fired up. So we're going to be back after tomorrow, same kind of general area. And uh, don't forget to comment. Leave us a comment down below right here on YouTube. Just leave a comment. I don't care what you say. say mm -hmm. I mean, I do care what you say. Just Give say them, something. You need to give them something to encourage them to comment. Well, that's what we're doing every day. Every day you can win gear. So again, today we're giving away Bully Bull Extreme Tube with the Sitka Subalpine Pattern and a Elk 101 Signature Series Call from Rocky Mountain Hunting Call. This is the call we used all season. Well, not this one, but yeah, this is the model call we used all season. And uh, we're going to send you one. Not one that we use this season, a new one, of course. But We've got a diaphragm elk call bugle tube with the Sitka cover on it. Just leave a comment below and we'll go through the comments and pick one to win. And we'll see you tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow. Day four is coming up. We'll see you.